Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I continue with Game Deck Blind. This episode is going to be another episode of nothing but reading the codex, so because there's a lot of those entries. So, if you're not interested in this, uh, you might actually just skip it, mm, because there's going to be nothing else inside this episode, so uh, regular gameplay will, will resume from the next time, uh, but for now let me get to the codex reading. And it might seem a little bit disjointed, and that's because mm, it, it's an edited... I read it all in one sitting, which was kind of crazy, and it took like three hours, so this, in reality, this actually happened some time ago, but I'm sp splitting it into two because it was too long, so it's just another part of what I've already once read in, in, uh, during the previous Codex reading entry. Uh, dual Mask Therapy. Uh, sorry, Professor, but could you tell us again uh, how exactly does this therapy work? Uh, I have to admit, I don't quite understand your explanation. Oh, pardon me. I always go so fast my students get confused. I'm not your student, sir. No? That's a pity. Uh, so, the Two Mask Therapy is the latest creation of the Ease Your Mind company. It has been developed exclusively for the owners of Mobriums, and to be perfectly honest, I am skeptical about this solution. You've said that already, sir. Uh, I would like you to explain how it works. Yes, yes, sorry. The Two Masks Therapy is offered to people who have experienced severe psychological trauma and suffer from PTSD. Uh, UIM has built a program, or rather a therapeutic game, that, teaches quite, that reaches quite deep into the patient's psyche. The basic rule of therapy is that it should allow the, the client or the patient to deal with reality together with its challenges, stresses and problems on their own. They should be able to maintain a certain balance between regression and aggression. Which means, regression is a retur return to childish behavior, behavior, but isn't that healthy? It is, but not when you're faced with an important decision. Not uh, This is not the time for thumbsucking and daydreaming. Uh, you know what I mean? I do. Now, aggression is the opposite of regression. Excessive stress leads to an unhealthy, con unhealthy confrontation, such as inflicting pain on yourself or others. What does it have to do with the therapy? Well, the two masks control the, player, the, the client's stress levels, as long as it's optimal, they don't intervene, but as soon as its value crosses a minimum or maximum threshold, one of the two masks is activated. The player can only choose their names and appearance, everything else is controlled by the program. And how does it work? Well, let's assume the patient's stress levels exceeded the maximum threshold. The corresponding mask, let's call it Bobby, activate, activates and three things happen. First of all, the person talking to the patient begins to see Bobby. That's a clear sign that the therapeutic program has been activated. Secondly, the patient's consciousness is transferred to a mini virtualium, where they learn how to deal with the excessive, excessive stress in a confront, controlled condition. It's like a combat training room. So we could say that the patient gets switched off. Uh, yes and no. Bobby is a program that synchronizes with certain areas of the patient's psyche. This way, the person talking to the patient can receive clear signals about what led to them switching off. That's exactly what concerns me about this program. Those Bobbies can act quite strangely. Instead of explaining what caused uh, stress for the patient, they make people around them uncomfortable. Still, it's the client that goes through therapy, not the people around them. Uh, yes, but it's not that simple. The patient's family could be in pain too. Besides, bobbies sometimes break, break through to volitional areas of the psyches and start to manipulate their in interlocutors. Personally, I would advise against this kind of therapy, uh, and I don't know why Uniform Services, the Outrangers to be specific, have decided to purchase the program. There are better, more tested options. Maybe because bobbies can take form of animated animals. Maybe. Or maybe because uh, AYM has won the tender by tanking the price. It's said that the program has been developed exclusively for the owners of Mobriums. Why is that? Because of the mini virtualia, 
and the owners of mob rooms can switch off in the middle of a walkway and almost immediately enter a virtualium. Organics need couches for that. That's fair. But what does the second Bobby do? The one that acti activates during excessive regression. The second bo when the second Bobby activates, the patients enter patient enters a virtualium where they can grow up and face challenges while remaining in a pleasant state of regression in a natural. I like what I'm hearing, you have convinced me. I don't like it at all. Believe me, you shouldn't mess around with a person's psyche on such a deep level as Two Masks does. It reminds me of the cases from the game called Abyss. I don't advise it. Mm, popular information streams. The Fist of the Low City, Scratches on the Low Glass Ceiling, Local news media, media and social commentary, anti-corporate commentary, Lex Occulta on the lawlessness of the law, a, a dark web portal focusing on con conspiracy theories and anti-corporate, fields when there are no words, a social media platform for sharing feelings and sensory experiences, pro-corporate, uh, Tales from Mecca, a conservative Muslim platform, neutral, global network news, the only stream that matters, a corporate news platform, pro-corporate, pro the market never sleeps, it's always 9.30 somewhere, market and financial news, pro-corporate, the secrets of global management, e-manager, business-oriented stream, pro-corporate, follow me, will shape, shape your opinion, a platform which posts the most popular influencers, anti-corporate, clear skies, your taste is in good hands, a lifestyle platform, Pro-corporate, control a man delete, uh, let there be control and purity, a conservative Christian platform, pro-corporate, inner ear, music straight into your brain, a music platform, pro-corporate, uh, molecular scripting and brain fixes, want your plex to have a stronger effect, molecular scripters know a way, as nervous system experts, they are well they are well aware that plexes have a more of a punch if you send them straight into their skull, that is. Using a sense, your attraction is your attention is diverted from. Uh, plexes work best when your brain can defend against them. To sum up, if you focus on listening, you won't notice the stimuli from your own body. For example, you listen to music and forget about hunger. If you focus on your body, you won't pay attention to what you see. For example, if you're dancing, you can't see the girl next to you is talking to a, to a baboon. If you focus on what you see, you'll pay less attention to sounds. For example, if you start staring at a person you're talking to, you will stop listening to what they're saying. Amazing, right? Use that. How? First, you'll find a brain, fi a brain fix. Uh, you feel like taking Rainbow World number 6. That one only gets you high by enhancing colors, but you want the effect to be better, faster and stronger. What should you do while uplo uploading it to your brain? Dance. That way, that way the plex will have an easier time settling in, in you, because the brain would, won't resist. You'll have such a magical rainbow of colors that Heimdall himself, or whatever his name was, will envy you. Cracker's honor. Just remember, sweetheart, to use this method, you need to be adv an advanced scripter. Still. I encourage you to try your hand at this profession. Believe me, it's worth it. Now go and experiment and don't forget to tell me about it in the comment section. Mm, okay, I read all of this before. AI. Artificial intelligence is everywhere around us, in customer support specialists, in guides that show us around museums, even in obby coins that speak to us as caring illusions. People often, in, often mistake AIs with actual humans. Why is it like that? Let's hear Professor Logan Ramsey from Warsaw School of Applied Psychoneurology and what he has to say about this. Artificial intelligence simply does not exist in the environment in which Homo sapiens developed. Therefore, we have no choice but to anthropom anthropomorphize the bots that smile at us. 
when we see a lively face facial expression, we automatically assume that they are the result of emotions and intentions. That's why we treat AIs as human. However, there is a profound difference between a human and an artificial intelligence pretending to be one. Is it really that profound? Oh yes. I'll explain it. Humans are self-aware beings. They know that they exist. It doesn't matter whether you're organic, a zoonet or a digenet. Um, that is, whether you have a full body or only a brain, organic or synthetic. Awareness of your own existence is extremely important. Does that mean even the most advanced artificial intelligence is not aware that, is, that it exists? From a, metaf a metaphysical standpoint, it does not. And that means, when you look at your hand, your leg, or your reflection in, your, in a mirror, you think, I am. Artificial intelligence won't do that. But AIs have sensory organs, they see with cameras, listen with sensors, which constitutes the next major difference. Which is, imagine being in a completely soundproof room with no windows. Inside, there are huge books with instructions. If a card with a specific Chinese sign slides into the room through a special slot, you will need to respond with a different specific sign from, a thousand, from thousands that are stored in the room. Should I assume that I don't know Chinese? Correct, you don't know what the, what the characters mean. Suddenly, three cards slide into the room. You suspect that there are people outside, but you can't hear them or see them. You look at the signs, memorize the order in which they slide inside, then follow the instructions and realize that such a Chinese sentence or word has 10 different possible responses. Since you have no idea what, what they are asking, or even if they are actually asking anything or just saying hi, you pick, you pick randomly and answer with a sequence of signs of your choice. The people outside, they must, might be amused, they might be outraged, they might nod, you won't see that. They will answer with another, another, another 10 signs, and you will browse the interaction again and respond ac accordingly, with no clue about the meaning of the words, I answer to or with. Yes, after a year of those conversations, you have memorized most of the instructions and you are able to respond to all sorts of sequence signs, but you still have no idea what you're talking about. Very interesting. This is so-called, uh, this is, this is the so-called Chinese room, a thought experiment that demonstrates how in artificial intelligence works. Their facial expressions, tones of voice, words and gestures are just cards they slide through a slot without realizing what they mean. They are nothing more than memorized patterns and responses to the cards we slide in the room, that is, our words, gestures and faces. Unfortunately, artificial intelligence does not assign meaning to their words or to the gestures it performs, neither does it understand what we say. That is somewhat scary. Sadly, AIs are nothing more than the Chinese rooms I described. Incredible. And as we established earlier, they don't need to know they don't even know they exist. Now, the Chinese room is a real thought experiment. Like it's a, it, it's it's meant to illustrate how difficult it is to truly judge self-awareness, because uh, you could have, mm, you know, a, a, something approaching AI that would be uh, well programmed enough that it would give. Uh, responses to your inquiries that would be entirely sensible. They, they would make sense all of the time. But as this uh, thought, uh, thought experiment demonstrates, you don't have to know what you're saying to do that. You just have to have a set of recognitions of, oh, if someone says this, then I answer with this. But you don't have to actually know what it means. Mm, I read this already. Mm, auto cars are vehicles based on NTG generators and are used for public transport in the lower layers of the police. Their area of operation is commonly referred to as the low city. Uh, brain fixes, should we use them? I gotta say, I would rather get wasted than upload a plex from a brain fix into my head. But like wasted wasted with alcohol? Absolutely, you're a proper dinosaur. Why? You would rather pollute your bloodstream with ethanol that transforms into poisonous 
uh, Altas, uh, uh, Altacetehyde destroys your nerve cells, weakens your liver, and leaves you hangover and dehydrated. A plex, my dear, is a neuro drink to be specific. Uh, uh, doesn't introduce any substances into your organism. When you upload it into your brain, it works like a flywheel for some of your neural areas. It winds them up without the use of chemicals, no side effects. That's not true. They make you tired. Like any exertion, your brain doesn't stop working when you're having fun. It needs to rest eventually. I heard that people abuse neuro drinks and they have trouble with brain fatigue, but every addiction works like that. Two weeks off, off brain fakes and they are back in the land of the living. I'm not convinced. Keep drinking then. I'll stick to brain fakes. Mm, Chi Tong is the most popular programming language based on ideograms resembling kanji characters. Chi Tong is not linear, but rather a three-dimensional writing system. The programmers that use this language enter a virtual space where they see nodes and connectors and create a mind map or a neural network. The nodes and connectors both consist of Chi Tong characters. The nodes are shaped like spheres. When the programmer gets inside, uh, they can grab a Chi Tong character which constitute a node's brick, and open a drawer of characters uh, hidden behind it, a so-called tail. The brick-like characters can create logical sequences called super tails. The connectors are shaped like pipes and consist of brick drawers that store conditions and variables. The Cheetong writing system has many opponents as it has supporters, while it is while the first group accusing it accuses it of high entry threshold, the other emphasizes how intuitive it is, and that once the developer lays the foundations for the program, artificial intelligence can help them find bugs and refine the code. Um, a Diginet is an artificial person who was never organic. A Diginet psyche resides in a Rendan, which is a synthetic brain. Upon its creation, a Diginet only has such, such said synthetic brain, which is kept in a safe that ensures the organ's homeostasis. Currently, the only company with the technology to create a psyche is BWI, uh, calling their tech Pygmalion. By default, uh, the safe with the Rendan is held at the company's location. The client is paying for the creation of the Diginet, is able to provide an artificial body, a mobrium for the new life, uh, and the, the Rendan can be installed inside the mobrium, and the Diginet can live both online and in the realium. Diginets also have civil rights. Mm. There are questions on, of, on whether or not a random human being should have the right to simply pay for the procedure of creating another being, especially as the resulting creation can't initially live on, in realium. Both PWI lawyers and Pygmalion supporters claim that no one asks copulating parents whether they have the right to create a new human being. Nevertheless, the stability of an adult psyche Deprived of, of childhood memories and the nature of technology, which constitutes a trade secret, raises certain concerns, and the number, number of Diginet opponents are increasing. Diginets are often confused with Zoanets. Contrary to Diginets, Zoanets were, or still are, organic people. Uh, uh, Exeter Commercial uh, psycholo psychological physiological pregnancies are ruining women's organisms. We know that until now, nobody has said it out loud, but it's the end of the 22nd century and it's time to act. Have you ever noticed that the eggs laid by birds, reptiles and amphibians are quite small compared to the size of their bodies, or that marsupials have tiny offspring that fully develop in their pouches? Only mammals came, with the rec came up with the reckless idea that a female should carry her young inside her until it's outrageously big. Then our species took it to a whole new level. The newborn's head is so big that it, it can barely fi fit through the woman's birth canal. And then you have things like stretch marks, swelling, hormonal and circulatory disorders. It's a nightmare. 
but there's a cure for that, Exeter, an external uterus. Now women can become pregnant while keeping their bodies unchanged. All of the mother's movements, words and moods can be transmitted to the baby and vice versa. The mother can feel the fetus move around and her belly won't expand. No swelling, no stretch marks and other pregnancy-related pregnancy issues. The latest Exeter models can even transmit digital sensations if you're inside a game and the sun shines on your stomach, your little one will feel it. Fantastic, isn't it? Exeter's birth guarantees the same conditions as natural birth, but it's 100% safe, both for the brave baby and for the mother. What are you waiting for? Visit the OVO website and enter the new era of pregnancy. Sponsored article. A G pod, a helmet that simulates the brain's so called god area via Thomas's vibrations, which allows the user to feel the close presence of a divine, unconditionally loving being. G pods are used by the techno worshippers or techno priests. A uh, head firewall, a device invented and popularized by a fashion designer Claudio, Claudio Ramadan. Uh, it's worn on the head and comes in two shapes, a headband and a tiara. Heads prevent hostiles from hacking the user's psyche and advance hypnotic programs. Shortly after the introduction, multiple copycat products appeared on the market, though many were nothing more than decorative headpieces. Mm. A holographic three-dimensional movie. Most of the holo movies made in the, in the end of the 22nd century are interactive and can be experienced from within by observing the action through a 360 field of view. They can be watched in AR through standard glasses, in a seated or standing position, or virtually on the net. The aforementioned interactivity means that the viewer can make key decisions for the holo movie's characters. Modern holo movies are made both in Realium and in Virtualia. Some are produced exclusively in digital environments and hire digital actors, advanced artificial intelligences. Mm. Uh, illusion generators. Illusion devices are generate holograms in the air. Unlike three-dimensional AR animations, uh, these holograms can be seen with a naked eye. Even though Ilgen animations are usually semi-transparent and far from perfect, they are becoming more and more popular. Um, love pill. A pill containing nanobots that cause infatuation. The object of the affection is the person in whose, in whose DNA the pill is activated. The amorous state lasts for about two months. The ethical aspect of using the pill is still debated. The Mutation Control Center announces a new type of beacon today. The latest addition to the family of Jungle Guardian is named, Ga is named Jaguar and features a new scanner with an extended range from 20 to 35 kilometers. It should be mentioned that the scanners used by MCC beacons are not simple radars, but device devices able to detect genetic mutations. They could be described as big flying noses that identify uh, aromatic molecules it's worth mentioning that they have remarkable eyes that observe a wide range of electromagnetic waves and can spot the smallest organic particles. Do you remember when one of the beacons detected the Culex pipensis toxica mosquito by capturing, capturing parts of its wings with its bottom camera? Well, Jaguar's cameras will be three times as perceptive. This beacon is a lot tougher than the previous one. Not only will it withstand the fierce, at fierce attacks of bats and birds, but it can also, also more effectively defend itself, thanks to not one but three plasma guns. Let us remind you that, that while MCC beacons keep watch over vast stretches of jungles and forests between the polis, as well as over the undercities, it is still extremely dangerous to wander into those places. Mm. A medical robot equipped with advanced artificial intelligence, it can run detailed diagnostics, implement life-saving procedures, stabilize an injured person's condition, and perform multiple kinds of surgeries. Medibots execute commands given by authorized personnel. It can only act autonomously when its analysis proves that the life can, of an observed person is in immediate danger, but even then, the injured patient must first consent to the planned procedures.
a mobrium is a mobile natrium, a self-propelled container for a brain or a rendon. While natriums are shaped like cuboid boxes, mobriums are humanoid and they look like human beings. In the mobrium's abdomen, there, are well protect there is a well-protected space for a safe holding a zoanet's organic brain or a zoanet or digenet's rendon synthetic brain. Mobriums are powered by electrical energy from two Vagar's batteries, usually placed at the level of the machine's loins. There are, there are currently two types of mobriums on, this, uh, on the market, stock and custom, produced by the Interscope Corporation, uh, the, s s s the stock ones. From the cheapest to the most expensive, they are uh, Oscar, Neo, Digit and Doom. They differ in functionality and quality. The Doom is the only one that can fly. Custom. Uh, uh, this in these include uh, Pershals and Genskins. Pershals, much like stock mobriums, are mechanical. Their, their, their difference is that their general shape and fa facial features can be based on the buyer's preference. Pershals can resemble their owner's organic covering. Uh, Genskins are the epitome of bioengineering, though they are vulnerable con compared to Pershals or stock mobriums. At a glance, they look just, just like organic people. They are comprised partially of living tissue and partially of machinery. They draw energy from both batteries and food. Mm. Our guest tonight is a prominent omnicordist, Leanne Muse. Good morning. First question, what exactly is an omnicord? Is it an instrument? Uh, in a way it is. Could you explain? Uh, most classical instruments are limited when it comes to timbre and harmony. Like I'm, like I'm a five-year-old, Leanne. Sorry, a saxophone has only one timbre, so do acoustic guitar guitars and pianos, but synthesizers and tronic instruments... I was getting there. Obviously, their sound-creating capabilities are virtually unlimited. However, the sonic combinations they, they offer depend on the number of placement of our fingers, uh, on the number and placement of our fingers, even using the best instrument in the world, you can't have more than 10 simultaneous out inputs or triggers, unless you're playing with your feet. Well, yes, then you, can ha then you can have more. Anyway, when you play an instrument, even a tonic one or something out of this world, you can only create music according to that instrument's limitations. Of course, we have DJ consoles, which are a lot like omnichords, but they are physical objects. So, are you ready to tell me now? Your instrument is different from all of those you've mentioned. I am. An omnichord is not a physical object. It is a kind of software. If you learn to control it, it will be able to create multi-track po polyphonic musical pieces with your mind and modify them according to your preferences. Imagine being able to change harmonies of multiple tracks, control the tempo, volume, sounds of intro instruments and various other elements all in real time. Fascinating. Is it hard? That depends on your ambitions. Even a preschooler can create a simple melody, but if you want to recreate Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, however... Uh, wait, conductors have the notes for all of their instruments in their heads, right? Uh, for well-known pieces, some of them do, yes. A professional omnichordist is somewhere between a conductor and a composer and can modify tracks and ex experiment with their pieces in real time. Uh, fascinating. But listen, omnichords are often associated with animations, hollow projections, illusions. That's true. People often think that those visuals are omnichords, but they are just decoration. An omnichordist could be standing in a corner of a club and nobody from the audience would be able to guess who was creating the music. Well, that wouldn't be entertaining. Exactly. That is why Omnichordists use Ilgens, similar to Mnemo projectors. Uh, these devices allow them to create animations that correspond with their moods, music and vision. It can be pretty much anything. Pink elephants, waterfalls, exploding galaxies, total abstraction. You often see animations resembling or even imitating actual instruments. Why is that? Sometimes venue owners insist on it. They think the audience might not understand what I'm doing unless they see something resembling a keyboard or guitar strings. Are those in illusions ever interactive? Can you touch them or make a sound? That happens a lot. Omnichordists like to have something to do with their hands, so they add motion-responsive elements to their animations. Okay, Leanne, so would you be so kind and play us something? 
with pleasure. Mm. Uh, poster hacking. Imagine going to your favorite bar to have a drink and uh, forget about life for a while. You go in, order a beer, sit down, uh, and then what? The poster on the wall blinds you with a hollow, projector, hollow projection of a seductive lady, completely ignoring the fact that you're gay, or shows your rival good about team, or some fucking ad for a beard stop, even though you like your beard. Now, what can you do with that to make the place feel nice again? I'm telling you, forget about hacking. The poster frames are connected to the global network and the bar owner has a full control of them since they are the one renting the ad space. You have to be an expert. You have to be a fucking hacking wizard. And let's not kid ourselves, you're not. Neither am I. And neither are most people. They, there aren't many experts in general. But the poster still keeps mocking you. So what do you do? Well, you visit my store, you'll find the link above, below, fucking everywhere. Really, that's the whole article. Uh, this whole article is a, li is a link, every fucking letter. Anyway, you visit my store and you find a microchip called Poster Buster. Uh, this thing is as cheap as a game pill in Low City, so why don't you save yourself a trouble and buy 10 at once, huh? Once a drone delivers your package, Grab one of the chips and turn it on. Your Woktel, or whatever it is that you use, will detect it. Upload an image, a projection, or a, holo or a holo movie fragment of your choice. But remember that the thing cannot be longer than a standard ad, which is about 30 seconds. Now, go to your favorite bar, order a beer, sit next to that annoying poster, check that nobody's watching, take out your poster buster, and uh, stick it anywhere under the frame. That's it. The poster will swap the ads chosen by the owner for your own content. Obviously, you have to be smart. You can't just upload anything, or the owner of the poster will rec recognize that somebody has been messing with it. Choose something that looks like a regular ad. That way, everyone will be happy. And that's what that's what this is about. Cubo, over and out. Ad from the Fun Stuff store. Mm. Psycho scans differ in quality and use. A deep psycho scan. This scan maps the structures of the neural network and glial cell network. It includes all synaptic connections and the quality of those connections, types of neurotransmitters and synapses. Uh, deep psycho scans allow, allow us to recreate the scanned person's brain in the form of a random. Uh, security psycho scan. This scan is superficial and is performed to confirm or repute the, uh, refute the identity of a person who wants to access an area protected by a psychoscanic device. This procedure is much more precise and reliable than retin retina scanning. Uh, V-scan. This scan can be used to create a V-ghost of a person. This procedure takes much longer than the standard psycho scan. It requires the consent of a scanned person and involve, involves asking a series of question, questions as well as putting them in a series of emotional states. A V psycho scan is performed by companies specializing in V ghosts. They can be performed on a deceased person shortly after, uh, shortly after the demise, but the V ghost will never be fully faithful to the original uh, as, well, uh, as when scanning a living person. All other kinds of psychoscans psycho only allow us to create highly flawed forms of Vigos. Uh, medical psychoscan. These scans are performed by Medibots and advanced medical equipment. Their purpose is to determine the patient's condition. They can be uh, used to confirm or rule out mental disorders and illnesses using intoxicants and plexes. Advertising psychoscan. This is a superficial psychoscan that allows us to confirm the identity and analyze the consumption preferences of a scanned person. They are performed by advertising drones. A military psychoscan. These scans are performed by police, military, the outranger drones. Uh, they are more thorough than the advertising psychoscans, closer to deep psychoscans, but not as precise.
Vagar-based um, batteries, an energy storage, storage device widely used around the world. Uh, around the world. Uh, ever since the invention of Vagar's batteries by Frec Noir Heavy Industries conglomerate in 2130s, its working principle has remained the subject of speculation. E X-ray analysis suggests that the batteries might use nuclear fission or f fusion or fission. It's impossible to dismantle a battery outside of Frec Noir uh, specialist lab labor laboratories, although ex ex experts of international economic law speak out against if the way Frec Noir Industries keeps their technology a secret, for reasons unknown to most lawyers, the conglomerate, conglomerate still hasn't disclosed most of its patterns. Uh, uh, the the, the V8 prices. Demonstrations against the high V8 prices took place today in the lower levels of Sydneyland at 10 pm the local time. Let us remind. Uh, remind you that modern medicine allows people to regenerate limbs in two ways. The first, cheaper option, is basically covering the stump with a layer of stem cells, which are regularly stimulated. The process takes, depending on the size of a lost limb, from a few months to over a dozen, and the regrown limb often exhibits certain deformations. The, other, the second option, a device called a viator, is able to print the missing part of a limb in a couple of days. Unfortunately, our country is not an exception. Such an operation is an extremely expensive one everywhere, and only the richest can afford it. Social unrest is growing, and stratification only makes it worse. You're watching Australia Express. Don't go anywhere. Uh, Viper is the, is the portmanteau of virtual presence. Viper generates a simplified virtual environment that can be used instead of telesense calls. Uh, during a Viper call, the users meet virtual, in virtual reality to speak without witnesses. Unlike calls made via net menus or game chats, Viper calls guarantee privacy. In order to make a Viper call, the user needs a special chair that works as a temporary virtual coach, couch and helmet combined. Uh, the latest Wachtel model, although the, although the market has recently been dominated by Omnis, by Omnix, by Omnix and the recently introduced Obicoins, the Wachtel business is still going strong. Analysis claim that sales figures will stay high for the next five years, especially among the middle and lower lower class buyers. And that said. The new Neoya model revealed yesterday by Wheeler's Gears could be an object of desire by the members of any class, as long as uh, uh, that's what the experts believe, and it's hard to say that they are wrong. First of all, it's an actual device that you hold in your hand, and I'll always emphasize how big of a plus is that. Not everyone likes having a telesense, because that's what Omnics and Obicoins are, and nobody will convince me otherwise, uh, glued, to their forehead, glued to their forehead or wearing one on their wrist. Uh, secondly, it not only has internal display that you can magnify up to 10 times on your glasses, but it also generates an additional external display, not as sharp and pretty as the first one, but definitely reliable. I'm not talking about AR. Uh, uh, it has a small inbuilt illusion generator. Uh, the device, similar to Omnix and all modern Wachter models, synchronizes not only with your glasses, but also with your lenses. So if you don't want to use the internal or generated display, you can admire the visual fireworks of your, on your personal gear. And now for the best part, uh, Neoya activates pressure receptors mm, on your fingertips, allowing you to feel the AR buttons that are your that are that you're clicking just like Omnix and Obicoins. M maybe humanity isn't ready to give up on Wachtels yet, or at least that's what that what that's what Wheeler's Gear CEO seems to think. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm honestly frightened of Zoenets. Wait, you, how do you how do you call it? A Zoenetophobe? Come on, man. You're lying in a hospital, your body is rotting, you're not capable of living on your own, and you've got a helmet stuck on your dome, and it never ends, you're online 24-7. I mean, it's sick. 
That's because they are sick, Yuzek. You're forgetting about... And you're forgetting about those who only have their brains. Now that's a real horror story. Nothing but a brain in a net room, floating, hooked to hundreds of wires. And you're stuck with the box at home, saying to your guests, Meet my dad. Dad, say hello. But dad is alive, online. And you're still forgetting about those who transferred their psyches to a synthetic brain. Uh, surprisingly, they seem to be the sanest of the bunch. A Rendan is aesthetically pleasing, it's not dripping with mucus. Yuzek, uh, an organic brain doesn't drip either. But, it, but still, the Rendan is a safe at the headquarters of the Interscope Corporation or BWI and the only thing that you can do is surf the net. Wrong. You can place it inside the mob room and walk around Realium like everyone else. Like everyone else. Have you seen the looks people give those mob rooms? Those robot casings are the sensation of every district. But no, Zoanets are weird as hell. So you really are one. I mean, I really am what? A uh, Zoanetophobe. Mm, 11 Bits, a company based in the Pacific and Indian Ocean Federation, District China, operating in the arms industry. At the beginning of the 22nd century, it was called Fort Tao. It was Tao's analysts uh, who, after the Great Temporal Crash, established that the year was 2120. The calendar proposed by Tao has been in effect ever since. In the Renewal Era, which came after the Great Temporal Crash, Tao changed their name to 11 Bits, completely severing its brand ties to the historical events uh, which it was part of. Uh, Interscope Corporation, the international Tronic Corpor company, created the Brahma game, perfectly, perfectly recreating Realium, uh, the, word of, the world of Vishnu, a compromise between the needs of Zoenets, accustomed to Realium, and the reality offering them superpowers. Uh, in the Interscope Corporation, the Interscope Corporation is also a maker, maker of Mobriums and Rendons. Uh, la lately, the corporation has started closely cooperating with BWI regarding the Pygmalion technology. Uh, Mutation Control Center, an international organization established in 2072 in order to monitor mutating fauna and flora outside the ABBs in the police undercities, it cooperates with the Outrangers organizations. Uh, the Outrangers. Uh, let me tell you, Krzysiek, there are no real men anymore. No, there aren't, any, Emily, unless we're talking about the Outrangers. Oh yeah, they are supermen. I wish I knew one. Well, now's your chance, because I, I've invited a real green one. Uh, you didn't. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Adams, you can stop hiding now. Please join us. Wow, a real ranger. Please have a sit, but do seek sit next to me. God, look at that armor. It's getting hot in here, isn't it? Hey there, stud. Hello, ladies. Uh, Lieutenant, please tell us about yourself. Uh, you can start with your address. Uh, Wilma. Uh, have you looked at the man? Okay, where do I start? The Outrangers are a paramilitary organization started in 2073. A, a bit less historical and a bit and a little more personal, please. Emily. <clears throat> it's an international organization working in close cooperation with the Mutation Control Center. We are trained and prepared to penetrate areas beyond the ABBs. Penetrate? Interesting. I'll have to agree with you on this one, Emily. Usually we fly over the jungle, but sometimes we perform foot patrols which are extremely dangerous. There are also rescue missions, when some reckless tourists go on a trip beyond the ABB on their own. Exactly, ma'am. We also perform maintenance on the MCC beacons, fetch data from them and protect the residents of the police's lower levels. It's so romantic, I'm absolutely fascinated or in lust. I can give you my address if you still... Yes, please. Mm, the Toads, an informal name for the Outrangers used on the lower levels of the police. 
uh, painters, a legendary group of players that stayed on the top uh, from the f from from the 30s to the 50s of our century. They were led by Pani Santor, Kill the Mole, and Trepanator. Painters are, f are five time winners of the Keep Keep Riders Clan Championships. Keep Riders was a clan based fantasy MMO. The game required you to be alert at all times, as the enemy clans could take over your opponent's an opponent's stronghold with fewer people when fewer people were guarding it. The hardcore games, popular in the 40s, had NPC support removed intentionally. Painters played the initial versions of pain induction games, the precursor to contemporary goodabouts, in which they were often victorious, and the now forbidden marathons that continued for five or more days. Legend has it that Pani Santor could stay inside the game for six days straight without using stoppers. Kill the Mole and, and Trepanator claimed in interviews that their, fr their friend perfected the art of slowing down their metabolism. Uh, painters no longer play professionally, but rumor has it that you can still sometimes find them in unpopular but scandalous games. Is that true? If you should find them, give them a shout out from the Serious Games staff. Mm, sleeves at Yet's. I've seen phonies who put some plastic or metal on their sleeves and act like they are sleeves. Pathetic. If you don't get who we are, don't act like you do. We see right through you. First of all, while we're no group, we're no Boy Scouts. Everyone... Uh, we're no group, we're no Boy Scouts. Everyone who wears sleeves is their own king. Uh, we do have... We have no illusions. We were born here, we will die here, and Realium is overrated. I don't know what others think about, think about Virtualia, but the sleeves that yet is coming rarely go online, mostly because that's what, where the trolls hang out, and we don't like them. Uh, it's hard to enter games at Yetis, so we prefer booze, drags, and brain fix plexes. I have seen phonies who drink dope and, and soaked up neurodrinks and thought that made them sleeves. Fucking pathetic. You don't get it. That's not what it's all about. Intoxication is not the goal, it's just a way. They ask me a, ga a way to what? And I hope for a sim and hope for a simple answer. Fuck, I'm not telling you that. You tell me, and then I will tell you if you're talking shit or getting closer to the truth. And should we be afraid of the sleeves? Sleeves. Where did that name come from? Those who don't visit the lower city don't know don't know that modern clothes, which fit everyone, uh, everyone perfectly regardless of their size, do not always work properly. The first thing that usually breaks in cheaper models of jackets and sweatshirts uh, is the buffer regulating the sleeve length. Sometimes they snap, or the sleeves get, get way longer than it's supposed to be. Obviously, the enterprising boys and girls from the low city don't want to look like scruffs, so they fix the clothes in any way they can, they fasten unruly, bu unruly buffers with buckles, wrap their shoulders with straps, use patches or metal fasteners. This has led to the creation of a fashion for strengthening, even reinforcing sleeves. They have create, though created out of necessity, these unusual sleeves have become one of the most distinctive features of the low-layer badass appar apparel. And that's where the ter term sleeve, sleeves came to be. It means people who are, who, who know what real poverty is and how to deal with it. Toughened by life, they have seen shadows of existence and are not afraid to peer into the darkness of the Undercity. So no, we shouldn't be afraid of sleeves. They are like bears. If you get out of, out of their way, they won't bite. Most of them, anyway. Mm. Um, the Hon Clan, Knights Code Clan Registry, um, established uh, established on 12-12-2197, uh, 521 members, considered passive, players take few aggressive actions, they mostly defend their territory, admins have reported clan members' behavior as sectarian on a number of occasions, and described the group as a cult. The organization is led by a player named Galomar, also known as Lord. 
Members of the Hon clan claim that they have seen gods. Uh, that must have either been a shared hallucination or a shared hallucination. Uh, uh, trolls in local joints. I went on. Uh, I went to one of the famous clubs in Low City recently. Oh God! And you made it out alive? Stop! It was really classy. Lovely strippers, male and female. Oh, I want to go. Can you give me the address? Sure, but listen, it's interesting. I thought it would be dull and drab. But it wasn't? Uh, no. Uh, and not because of the lasers, brain fixes and so on. Uh, but the clothes. What do you mean? I don't know if I was lucky, or if it's quite normal on the lower levels. Anyway, there were a lot of strippers. No, you idiot. Cut, no, you idiot. Cut it out. I'm talking about trolls. Ogres? Orcs? No. Online trolls, you know. The pranksters of Virtualia. They were that colorful? Uh, yes, they looked amazing. I think Claudio Ramadan or some other fashion designer could take a clue from them. Colorful glasses, spiky hair, fleshy colors, clothing, each item in a different shade. Uh, some doikas dang dangling on cables, guys and girls festooned with screens, animated clothing inserts. I'm telling you, what a show. I would love to see that. And in the, in the background, that's interesting too. Uh, there were big dudes and tough chicks wearing rather drab clothes, but with those, you know, steel reinforced sleeves. Uh, phenomenal. So next time we'll go together? Definitely. We just need to snuggle, smuggle some booze, because the drinks are really, really lousy there. Uh, tick on the net. Got a question for you people. Uh, trolls of a guy named Tick. Anyone seen them? I've met them in, in crying guns. They came with tanks in the middle of the attack and smashed my clan to pieces. We had to go back to our bases. Huge losses. Don't know them. I do. In dream space, they raided my station and destroyed everything. They lost their ships too. It was a suicide attack. I wonder if they do anything other than spoiling fun for other people. I think it's their style of play. Uh, what I mean is, they don't play. They screw with others playing and enjoy it. Screw screw with it and screw it up. Interesting. What's interesting? 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 Are you stuck? Interesting. Interesting. Funny guy. Interesting. 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 And Sensory World's Player Forum Archive, Ticks and Trolls thread. The thread has been bugged and blocked by the user KC KCIT. Uh, its current form is non-interactive record of the discussion. A trolls that yet is coming. You think you know the trolls because you've met a few online? That's bullshit. Trolls are just like any other group of people, diverse. There are lone wolves. They, they are ro lone wolves, or rather lone clowns. They are formal and informal groups, and each one is different from the other. In fact, the only thing they have in common, the way they look in realium. Those gaudy hairstyles, huge glasses, and other things they festoon themselves with. Anyway, anyway, let's cut to the chase. My favorite joint is Yeti's Coming in the Gasp Tower, the roof of the Undercity, the lowest level. That's where the trolls from the Ticks group gather. Uh, although some say they are actually led by a certain Cam Grozny. Never mind. I think they are mean by nature, psychos who enjoy making others pe other people suffer. Uh, they are not stupid, though. Um, they do notice normal people around them, uh, and they they notice the normal people around them and know if they've gone too far. The normal ones will kick them out of the picture, so they mostly mostly maintain decent standards of behavior. If you don't want to get burned, uh, here are a couple of tips on how to handle them. Firstly, never talk badly about Virtualia in front of them. Second. Never glorify booze or drugs. Ironically, they prefer to, to play sober than dance stoned. Thirdly, if you, you'll earn the respect if you engage in some trolling activity yourself. If you think they're one, they won't notice your actions, you're wrong. They've got eyes in the back of their heads. I guess it's because of the games. Think about it. Well, if you want to fight them, 
Uh, then do the opposite of what I said, of course, at your own risk. Mm, okay, I've read those two already, uh, and those two are new. Blue type, perceptible, reflective. Out of all types, this seems to be the most reserved. Blues are mindful, silent and analyzing. They go into detail, scrutinize nuances and pay attention to data included in documents. Don't take them for pushovers though. When they pay take part in discussion, they can crush their opponents with irrefutable facts. After all, that's what matters most to them. You'd be wrong to think that this independent analyzing type doesn't have any flaws. The biggest one is their characteristic emotional zombification. When you talk to a blue, it's hard to get what they what they are feeling, since uh, and they don't know the meaning of the word spontaneity. Uh, intuitive, reflective, goal-oriented, independent and honest, quick thinking and practical. If a person confronts you for no apparent reason, impatiently interrupts your sentences and expects solutions without detailed analysis, then probably they are they are this type. Reds value facts especially ones that help them to get what they want. Uh, when it comes to negative aspects, we should definitely mention the overuse of power and the brutal way of speaking, sometimes even acting. Uh, Bio-estates, self-sufficient villages located within the ABBs, which rely entirely on archiflora. The inhabitants of these areas live in, in tree sheds, while all architectural elements such as walkways, bridges and windows are built from genetically modified plants, bioestates are inhabited, inhabited by the enthusiasts of nature and healthy lifestyles. Gaia, a planet in the Sigma Draconis system, terraformed by, by Frec Noir heavy industries, the only globe that has been successfully terraformed by humankind. Immigration to Gaia is currently ongoing. Citizens leaving Earth Hope that on Gaia that can, they can find better employment opportunities and healthier natural environment. Mm. Information era, a period that began uh, in the seventh decade on the 21st of the 21st century and continues today. The demands of the information era included environmental protection and a ban on fixed media storage. Mm, Pat, what do you think about the occult law? Those biscuits are delicious, and the tea is excellent, and you misspoke. What about Pat? Lex occulta doesn't mean occult law. Uh, it's a popular phrasing, but the correct translation is mystery law. Uh, that's what. Lovely jam. Thank you, Pat, but uh, don't forget to butter your challah. But what do you think? Mm, yeah, definitely butter. And I really think I can't share my opinion with you, with you because I enjoy living too much. But Pat, let's start at the beginning. Lex Occulta is part of a conspiracy theory claiming that corp corporations don't follow the version of the law that everyone else does, but another occult version known only to them, right? Right. Can I trouble you for some jam? Of course. Wonderful. Right then, Serg. Uh, that's what's claimed in the conspiracy theory. What would, be the, what would be the purpose of Lex Occulta? The economic laws prohibit the existence of monopolies, right? Anti-monopoly laws dictates that one company cannot exercise control over a given market sector or no. Pour me some more tea. Mm, yeah, that's what the anti-monopoly law dictates. It seems quite exquisite, thank you. Meanwhile, every company's goal is to establish an, a monopoly. That is the ultimate goal of every corporation. So. How do we go, go about it then, untying this Gordian knot? We create our own occult law that we follow and leave the facade of official law for the champs out there. How about it then, Pat? Do you believe that monopolies really exist? You know, as per this Lex Occulta? Truly delicious biscuits, sir. Truly delicious. Well, to be honest, it's actually kind of interesting, uh, even in the real world, how... how sort of incredibly concentrated uh, certain segments of the market are. Like, uh, th there are mega corporations uh, currently that, 
have such an incredible broad uh, number of subsidiaries that you think those are all different companies, but it's actually one and the same thing. Like, it happens a lot with food products, for example, where, mm, you know, uh, uh, um, Coca-Cola, uh, um, Sprite, uh, Fanta and all that, it's all one thing, alongside with things like uh, a number of sweet brands uh, or like cereal, whatever. Uh, generally, with it happens a lot with food or like alcohol, like if vast majority of the most popular beer brands in the world uh, is all one company uh, in the end when you, when you go sort of up the ladder. Mm. And, and sometimes it leads to interesting things where, for example, uh, they, they get into quite vicious, you know, those subsidiaries, they get into quite vicious sort of advertising campaigns against each other, ostensibly, uh, and they can because obviously they won't sue each other because they are owned by the same company in the end. But this kind of advertising is much more engaging to most people. Mm, limbic system. Nowadays, almost every programmer is a neurology expert. Wouldn't you say so, professor? Yes, that's true. Uh, you hear a, a lot about the so-called limbic system. I looked at some scans and saw such, some animations, but honestly, it all seems terribly complicated. The inside of a brain is incredibly complex and a lot of structures that don't resemble anything specific. Could you? Of course. The limbic system is the part of our brain, the so-called the so-called paleomammalian brain. We have a sort of old brain in our brains, of course. The reptilian brain, which is the oldest, then the paleomammalian brain, sort of wrapped around the former, and then our modern brain, then the non-mammalian brain. So the limbic system is kind of... It's like the part of the paleomammalian brain responsible for experiencing emotions. Generally speaking, whenever we feel something, it's thanks to our limbic system. It allows us to remember information. The elements responsible for this function is, uh, is called the hippocampus. Apparently, uh, actually, could you tell us something more about the structure of the limbic system? If I started to list all of its elements, the viewers would fall asleep. The most important one is the amygdala, also called the brain's microcomputer. It's responsible for the initial assessment of the situation and imbuing us with an emotional sense. Another important element is the nucleus accumbens, responsible for the so-called reward system. It's actually our primal brain, since it unconsciously sees and hears things before we do it consciously. Then there's the hypothalamus, which controls the hormonal crusade, the hormonal cascade, and many other fascinating structures. So in summary, the limbic system is responsible for sensations, and sensations give meanings to what we see. This cannot be overestimated. Really? It doesn't seem that important to me. If I separated your facial recognition from your sensory center, and you looked at your father, you would say it's someone who looks like him, but not actually him. If I separated your emotions from your sensation of pain, you would say that you're in pain, but you wouldn't feel bad about it. So it's that important? It is. Mm. Uh, this topic has been discussed on many pages many times, but has never been much substance to it. The Warsaw City Police warns against the varieties of drugs preceded by a letter N, such as NL NLSD, N-cocaine, N-amphetamine, etc. Why are they dangerous? We reach to Colonel Felix Juba of the, of the toxicolo toxi Toxicology Department of the Warsaw City Central Police for his opinion. Hello, Colonel. Thank you for finding time for us. Hello. The letter N means the addition to, of, uh, means the addition to the chemical substances uh, mean, means that in addition to chemical substances, the preparation also includes nanobots. If the makers of the drugs are to be believed, their only purpose is to assist the preparation of the, uh, of the pharmacological kinetics, which basically means delivering it where it needs to go. 
They are, to use a metaphor, transport ships carrying the drugs to specific receptors, like in the case of telomine, exactly like that. The vitamins in telomine specifically target specific cell locations, which makes them more effective. In the case of drugs, for instance, in the NLSD, the, the amide of the delisergic de acid and the uh, de uh, and the dethletamine could theoretically access the uh, 5H22A receptors, of which it is an uh, of which it is an agonist. At least that's what the criminals who make the drugs assure us is happening. But uh, but then there's also the evenness, yes, the evenness of distribution. If we were to continue with the metaphor of transport ships, uh, they form a cue to the aforementioned receptors. Wait for their turn. And one day, once the previous transports have been spent, approach and unload their cargo. In theory, the inclusion of nanobots makes, makes it so none of the LSD is wasted, because it only reaches the receptors it's meant for, and the dosage is administered at an even pace, so even a hundred times smaller dose of a drug could yield the same results as a good, good old-fashioned good, uh, good old pardon the expression, acid. Uh, why then are we uh, issuing warnings about the letter N? What you're saying seems to be safe. Yes, that's why the market for the N drugs is so big. Let us keep in mind, however, that those are guarantees from people who don't answer to any committees and are not mandated to uphold any quality of the goods they sell, don't have to tell the truth because they, the substances they produce are illegal. And what are the risks associated with the dreaded letter N? Imagine that you let an army of nanobots manufactured by criminals into your organisms. Uh, those micro devices can do what their makers had promised, but they can also establish permanent residence in any of your organs, including the brain, causing irreversible, irreversible addiction or chronic pain which can only be alleviated with a substance sold by the criminals. The nanobots can only also program changes to your behavior or cause you to behave completely erratically, resulting in chaotic reactions that paradoxically are dangerous to our health and potentially lethal. Is that bad? Uh, yes, ma'am, it is. Of all of the substances you mentioned, NLSD is probably the most dangerous, which is why I chose this to, uh, chose to discuss it. If the nanobots contained within those capsules do not work according to the promises made by the dealers, they can cause permanent psychosis that is very resistant to treatment. Um, organophobia a sexual disorder in which the main component is being repulsed by the thought of having organic sexual partners. An organophobe ac achieves sexual gratification by engaging in sexual intercourse with virtual characters who have been visually modified using AR technology. Mm. Renewal Era, an enthusiastic socio-economic movement that followed the great temporal crash of 2120. Uh, skyliners are tall, uh, semi-suspended buildings that surround cities. They are reinforced by lines fixed to support satellites. Said lines are manufactured and patented by Frec Noir Heavy Industries. Uh, techno Priests, Spiritual leaders of techno faiths, they use Nemo projectors synchronized with G pods to present their spiritual visions to their, to their worshippers as hollow projections. At the end of the 22nd century, contemporary times, uh, Professor, if you were to discuss the most important characteristics of our times and contemporary technology, what would you talk about? First of all, about the rebellion of nature, we are living in cage-like cities that are separated from the aggressive ecosystem by the ABBs. Without them, we would be doomed. That's the first component. What are the other ones? Anti-G technology. The only thing that lets our towers be so tall and the walkways between, between them so dense. And of course, the fact that both freight and human transport is done only by air. What else? Perhaps Virtualia. 
hundreds of, and thousands of games and hundreds and millions of players, a kind of escapism specific to the late 22nd century, a lot of people pretty much live online. Are you talking about Zoenets? They have no other choice, at least they didn't until the first Mobrims were made. I'm talking about the players who seem to consciously live a life online and neglect their existence in Realium. Is that all? Or out of the major things, I think so. And what of historical events? Uh, what had the bigger imp biggest impact on the current reality? Probably the one no one remembers today. Which are? The rebellion of nature in the late 2070s, the start of the IT era around the same time, which pro produced the ban on recording information on material carriers, the development of ABBs, the establishment of Mutation Control Center and the Outranger organizations. That was all around the same time, right? Yes, the late 70s. And then we had that the great temporal crash of 2120, only most likely, only most likely of 2120 because of the de facto. Yes, we're not quite certain as to the year because everyone was sick with trid. Retro let's remind our viewers what the name is short for: time recognition impairment disease, which was caused by the RIC5 virus. The pande pandemic caused people to lose the track of time and the ability to identify what was when. It led to chaos, rioting, millions of victims. And then came this era, yes, the renewal era. Uh, that's when everyone said, excuse my language, screw it all. We need a new cultural rejuvenation. The most characteristic thing about those times were the first and the last revolution, driven by Genglish, global English, global English, uh, uh, which was on the rise on the, at the time, since they were mostly living in city countries more than actual countries, the citizens of Earth decided to create new last names, new object names, and started to dress like they wanted to, and not, by, not like dictated by current fashions. Today, you can h hear Miss Lilith Eternal in the, uh, uh, in the Ethan Sex commercials, or watch a reality show with Torkel Amor and Pauline Aim. Before before the renewal era, names such as Ernal, Aim or Amor didn't exist. But professor, these are ancient times. The renewal era was 80 years ago. Has nothing happened since then? No, not too much. Though perhaps the accelerated technological development. What about the emigration to Gaia? We have first terraformed the planet in a Sigma Draconi system. Right, I forgot about that. Forgot? I also forgot about the BLB technology, that was certainly a breakthrough, it makes people immortal. Only the richer people. Well, the upper middle class. That is why there are more demonstrations, especially in the lower layers of the police. What about the Pygmalion technology? Human creation? It seems that we are living in a time so complex that there is no way to cover everything in a single conversation. A dirty rain, mm. a weather anomaly in the lower layers of the polis, dirty rain is a result of water vapor condensing under the walkways of the higher levels of the cities. Uh, war driving, the net is everywhere. Unlike in the bad old days, war driving is no longer a symptom for searching for a signal, though uh, there actually used to be places where you couldn't find one. Today, war driving means looking for holes in the net. And there are holes in, realis in, in reas uh, realistically defined places in realium. How come? Well, people don't like to imagine... Uh, people like to imagine the net like an ocean. A smooth and sli slightly wavy surface of a giant reservoir. This is not the case. The net is made up of, of millions of tiny overlapping bubbles or watery spheres. These spheres are generated by millions of devices that together create the net. Most of the devices are fully synchronized with each other, hence the illusion of a smooth surface. There are, however, bubbles that interfere with one another, causing a kind of harmonic vibration that leads to cyclical disynch disynchronization. 
uh, it's as if you observed the waves from, from a shore and realized that they continuously grow in height up to, let's say, the ninth wave, which is disappro dis disproportionately large, and then comes the tenth one, hilariously small, but then you notice the following waves get bigger again, up to the ninth one. That, that what, that's what happens in those places. Every tenth wave is different, desynchronized. There are weak spots that you can essentially crack uh, that, that you can easily crack to enter the net and start messing around. War drivers marked them with signs, usually on walkways. In the bad old days, they used chalk. That is, that is uh, they called it war chalking, but it was too easy to uh, to, wa to wash off. Nowadays, they have special paints, bright, distinctive, and durable, so the pros can easily recognize them. If you want to access the net. Uh, that's what you have to look for. Uh, ROU, the roof of the Undercity is one of my favorite spots. Even though I'm standing on one of the lowest walkways in Warsaw City, I feel like I'm on top of a mountain. Below me is a 150 meter long gap, gaping abyss that's stretching over the seemingly endless ru ruins of old Warsaw. A ground cleaner's company, Cyclops, tracks away in the distance, clearing rubble from the old blocks of apartments. If you look hard enough, you'll notice bonfires made by savages among the dust and fog. I can hear them humming, uh, the humming of a nearby MCC beacon standing guard and watching over me. Yes, the ROU is definitely my fav favorite spot. Mm. Well, uh, that's it, man. That was way too long, to be honest. I'm probably going to cut it in two in editing, in which case you probably won't know, but uh, there's going to be some weird shenanigans, maybe, where at some point in the future there's going to be another episode, which is going to be like uh, another episode of reading the codex, which is going to be like the half of this, because literally I've been here for like two hours. So that's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.